Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today's video is going to be a pretty interesting one, something I don't know a whole lot about. Um, we're going to install some power poles today. I got two eight foot power poles to go on the back of the boat. Um, you know, it's something I thought about getting for quite some time, but they're just so expensive that I, I just kind of put it on the back burner. Um, <clears throat> happened to get a good deal for my buddy Johnny Johnson so if you're watching this video man I appreciate that very much um, so I'm gonna install them myself uh, I haven't done this before and uh, I don't think it's gonna be too hard so um, you know we will uh, go through it step by step and uh, show you guys how to do it in case you end up uh, wanting to do it yourself so give you a little shot of the power poles here we got the two eight footers the box shows blue but they're actually black and then we got a couple other boxes there the pumps and uh, brackets stuff like that so um, this is what one looks like out of the box here so it look pretty good when they're on the boat and I'm putting this on a 04 Skeeter the tough part here that I'm gonna have is I have a tight space here I have a two-stroke so I got the two-stroke oil tank there my battery charger and uh, four batteries because I have a 36 volt trolling motor and one starting battery so really tight spot but I'm hoping to fit one of the pumps in there and then one of the pumps in there so it's gonna be a tight squeeze but uh, I think we'll be able to get it done so uh, yeah let's go ahead and get into it all right, so the first thing I'm gonna install are the pumps. Um, that's gonna be probably the hardest part. So I'm gonna start with that just to make sure I have enough room. And uh, once we get those installed, we'll move on to the next step. So I opened up the box that the pumps came in, to, uh, came in and uh, I've got some bolts to bolt the pump to its bracket. And then got a package with some screws um, to mount the bracket to the boat. The bracket itself. So the pumps get screwed into here. These four screws <clears throat> are gonna get mounted to the boat. Then we got the pump. So this pump's not as big as I thought, um, but it's still gonna be a tight squeeze of my boat. So uh, we're gonna start with that. I'll show you guys what we're gonna do. All right, so my first step is to take this bracket here and how I'm gonna mount this. start with is I'm going to mark these four holes. I already checked to make sure the pump fits in there good. So we, we do, it's, it's going to be just a tight squeeze, but it is going to fit pretty good. So I'm going to start by marking those four holes, drilling, uh, start with a smaller drill bit, work my way up to the size of screw that's going in there. And I'm going to get those bolted down. All right, so you probably can't see this very well, but I went ahead and marked my four holes. Got one there, one there. Can't really see the ones on the black part there. That's like a mount for my battery charger. I'm gonna have to go ahead and drill through. So I got the holes marked. I'm gonna start out with a 764th inch drill bit, which is this guy right here. I'm gonna start out with that one and work my way up to the size screw that it comes with. spacer down there because that's a little lopsided so I just threw in a spacer make it nice and even
so got the four mounting screws in now it's time to set up that pump got a rubber spacer here washer with a little rubber end on it and a bolt Nine sixteen socket wrench to so do the trick here. Tighten it up. All right, now that that part's all done, next step is to install the brackets. So these brackets go on the transom mount there. So basically, got to take these two bolts off, install the bracket. So if you're installing this on a jack plate, you're only going to keep the back threaded plate. You're going to remove the side plate. to use a torque wrench but I don't have a torque wrench all right that part's all done this would be a lot easier with some help um, I'm gonna have a buddy come over and help me actually put the power pole on because they're a little heavy so we'll get some help with that and uh, should be able to get the rest by yourself all right so we got the brackets on they might need a little bit of adjustment. I tightened them up pretty good because I, I don't know if that transom is going to slide at all. So I'll have to adjust them maybe when the power poles go on. That's the left side. That's the right side. Pretty sturdy brackets. some help putting the power poles on had to just put four screws put four bolts on there they're not quite tightened up because I need to make some adjustments next steps to put a level on these power poles make sure they're nice and level then we'll tighten them up nice and good that's the other side look pretty slick just need to level them out, make sure we got enough room for the motor to turn all the way. And uh, then we'll go on to uh, hooking up the pump hoses, running that, filling the pumps up, purging them. 
then we're good to go. All right. Next step is to level these guys out. Measure the distance between the motor. Have the motor turned all the way. Make sure I got enough clearance. We'll measure the distance between that on each side. Level it out. Tighten them up. good. Go ahead and tighten them up. So you got about five inches on this side. I'm gonna match it on the next one. Could go a little closer than that. They just require enough room to uh, turn the motor, but five inches is fine. I don't need it that close. Probably better to do it a little bit further apart anyways. We'll move along. All right, so now that we got all that done, next thing to do is to uh, run these hydraulic hoses. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run them through the fiberglass of the boat. I measured out a quarter inch apart um, to run the hoses through. So I got to drill a hole through the fiberglass, which is uh, probably the scariest part. But I'll show you kind of how I set this up here. So I got two holes. I don't know if you can see that. Got my two holes marked about an inch and a quarter apart. I put some tape on there hoping that that fiberglass won't crack and uh, I don't know I got I couldn't get a good three-quarter inch drill bit so I'm gonna try and use this hole saw bit and uh, probably start it off in reverse and uh, get a good cut into the fiberglass and then put it uh, in forward and then uh, hopefully I don't crack the fiberglass but uh, wish me luck Well, <laughs> that didn't work out as bad as I thought. 
didn't scratch the fiberglass, didn't spider crack it. Um, hole drilled pretty good. One thing to make sure, you know, feel underneath there, make sure there's no wires or anything you're gonna drill into. Uh, that whole back area I drilled into is wide open, so there's no wires in there. Uh, but yep, yeah, here's a look at it. Got some cleaning up to do on the inside, but fiberglass, nice and clean, no spider cracks. There's a grommet that's gonna go in there anyways if, if any little chips happen around the edge, but I think uh, starting that bit out in reverse definitely helped a little bit. Kind of ripped the tape open a little bit, but I retaped it and uh, everything went good. So got to do the same thing to the other side and then uh, we'll go ahead and run these hoses through and hook them up to the pump. <clears throat> So I might keep this end tape on so nothing gets in the, the hose there. I'm going to put a little silicone around this grommet before I actually install it. But for now, bit of slack in that line. A little bit of clear silicone around here. down <laughs> silicone ready to go I'm gonna let that set up a bit before I mess around with the hoses down here hook them up to the pump I'm gonna do the other side get that one ready then we'll get back and hook up the pumps all right so we left these this tape here on the end of the hose just to make sure no debris gets in there so now it's time to take that off this hose is actually labeled, it says up on it. And then on the pump itself, one of the intakes say up. So you wanna match those up. It says to hand tighten and then do a quarter turn with the wrench. So that's what we're gonna do right now.
that was pretty easy. Um, just remember one of the cords, or I'm sorry, one of the hoses is labeled up, one of them's labeled down. So don't mix those two up or you'll have issues. Hand tighten them, quarter turn with a wrench, good to go. Um, I just have to clean this stuff up a little bit. The wires are a little long, so I'm gonna have to zip tie them and kind of clean them up, but I'll give you a shot of what it looks like when it's finished. I don't know how well you can see that, but we got the down and then the up over there. So a lot of extra hose here. I'll have to uh, kind of zip tie and clean it up really good when I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. Okay, we're on the home stretch here. Gotta fill the pumps with hydraulic fluid. This is what came with it. Got to make sure it's hydraulic fluid. Gonna fill it up to the full mark here. The rusty crimper. All right, time to hook up the wires to the battery. So I'm gonna start by hooking up the positives here. to make a little noise they're active you gotta make sure you put the hydraulic fluid in first and hook up the hoses before connecting the battery I got a lot of wires to clean up I didn't have much space to begin with in here and all these wires are taking up a ton of room so I gotta clean this up really good but for now I'm gonna get these babies going okay manually lower the anchor to the deploy position okay there we go power pole went down all right, so we're gonna program our dash remote here. Let's see, we're gonna hold the program button down for a couple seconds. Okay, we got the beep noise. We're gonna hold up. Still purging. couple times until it purges. I 
do that a few times, let all the air out. Sounds like it's all about out. Sounds good. All right guys, going to mount my remote for the console. I think I'm gonna put it right here. Make sure there's nothing behind there. No wires or anything. Careful so you don't crack that, it is plastic. That's all set. Now, drill a little pilot hole, make it a little easier than that. Alright guys, so that's about it. It was actually not hard at all to install these. Um, probably took me maybe four hours total. Took me a little longer because I barely had any room in the uh, battery box, so I had to kind of squeeze those in. Um, just remember to put silicone on just about every screw and hole you drill. and. Uh, yeah, you need a three quarter inch bit to drill holes in the back of the boat to run the uh, hydraulic cables. And uh, yeah, I'm not a mechanic. I don't really know a whole lot besides how to work a few tools. So uh, it was actually pretty easy. Um, nothing to be worried about as long as you know how to work some basic tools. Thanks for watching these videos, guys. If you like it, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, go ahead and subscribe. We got a lot of cool videos coming. A lot of uh, you know how to install stuff on your boat, some fishing videos, some Garmin electronic videos. So stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching.